Okay, so I've talked to too many people about the election and, and not even so much about how they're going to vote, just whether they're going to vote. And too many folks are like, nah, I'm not bothering. It doesn't matter. And that's, I think that's unacceptable. I really do. Uh, particularly for younger people and particularly for marginalized groups. We'll get into the history of it at another week. But today I wanted to talk about the divine charge. The fact that God has ordained, has given us the responsibility and the right to participate uh, in who governs us and how we're governed. If not for no other reason, voting gives you an opportunity to have your voice counted and everyone complains that they just don't want to be heard. So voting is a requirement. It's a sacred and necessary right. It's a sacred and necessary power, that right to vote. Your voice, your vote, your vote is your voice. Your vote is your voice. Your vote is your victory. Let's, 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 let's turn to a pivotal moment in the church, right? In the early church, after Judas Iscariot had betrayed Jesus, he betrayed Jesus and committed suicide. The apostles had to, they needed to choose, they needed to choose someone to take his place among the 12. They had two candidates. Now, I don't know how they got to the two candidates, but they had two. They got down to two candidates. Joseph called Barsabbas and Matthias. Matthias. Instead of simply just making a decision on their own, they did two things. The apostles first did what? They prayed. They prayed for God's guidance, saying, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these you have chosen. And then they cast lots. And the lot fell to Matthias, who was then added to the 11 apostles. This act of casting lots was more than just some random chance. This is a way of them seeking and trusting God's will. It shows us that even in the act of choosing a leader, the early church relied on a process. They relied on a process that involved both their participation and divine guidance. It wasn't just this, oh, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. No, they did two things. They prayed and they participated. They prayed and they participated because they recognized that their voice was their power. In the book of Acts, we see the early church faced with a challenge. It was a social issue. A group of widows was being overlooked in their daily in the daily distribution of food. This is Acts 6, 1 through 6. The apostles called the community together and asked them to choose seven men full of spirit and wisdom to address the issue. The community selected their leaders and justice was served. This was a this was voting. The rooted in the value, rooted in the values of care and justice, ensuring that everyone, everyone was treated with dignity. It was voting in the early, early church. Let's go to Old Testament. When Moses led the Israelites, he told them to choose wise and respected leaders from among them. This was not just us, them about, this wasn't just about them picking anyone. They needed to pick wise and respected, wise and respected leaders. And it was, and, and, and when they see, he, he further gave, he gave some further indication of what he meant. He wanted them to select leaders who would lead with integrity, integrity, lead with integrity, who understood God's law, integrity, and understood the law. This act of choosing leaders reflects the responsibility that we have today, that we have today to select those who will guide our nation with justice and righteousness. There are two things, integrity and understood the law. Let's fast forward just a little bit of time. Joshua, Joshua Moses' um, antecedent. Joshua, before his people declared, choose this day whom you will serve. The people had to decide whether they would, wanted to serve the God of their ancestors, Yahweh, Jehovah, the God we serve today, or go in another direction. This was a moment, this was a decision that they had to determine the trajectory of their future, a declaration of their allegiance to God. In the same way, our vote today is a declaration of our values, of our hopes, and our vision for the future. Brothers and sisters, friends, the Bible shows us that voting, choosing, and making decisions together is, is not just political. It's not just a political act. It's an act of faith. There are ways in which we honor God by ensuring that justice, love, and righteousness are at the center of our communities. Today, when voter suppression and apathy threatens our collective power, we must remember that voting is a sacred act. It's how we speak up for our, the voices, how we stand up for justice, how we declare our commitment to a better world. So I urge you, I implore you that you take this power seriously. When you vote, you're not just participating in a political process. You're fulfilling a divine responsibility. Let your voice be a testament to your faith, your hope, 
and your justice. May God guide your choices, bless your efforts, and strengthen your resolve to stand for what is right. Your voice is your vote, and your vote is your victory.